Differential calculus, what is it and why is it important to understand? If you're standing at the scene of a crime, as a detective, you can take measurements of temperatures and use differential calculus to determine information of the crime. If you're running a business and you're trying to determine the optimal selling price for your item, use differential calculus. If you're predicting changes in the weather, differential calculus. Essentially, differential calculus provides an answer to changing variables. Today's lesson, we're gonna be introducing differential calculus. This is a branch of maths that tells us how things are changing. Rather than starting off by speaking abstractly, let's look at a concrete example. Consider Usain Bolt sprinting 100 meters. Now, I think that we can all agree that he's not running at 35 kilometers an hour, let's say, for the entire race. For example, his first 20 meters is not gonna be as fast as his last 20 meters. To highlight this, We'll collect some data and I'll just draw on a best fit and put it onto a, a graph on Desmos. So we can do that here, uh, this, a displacement time graph of Usain Bolt's 100 meter sprint. So the Y axis is his displacement, so where he is in the particular race, and the X axis is the, the time in seconds, right? And so we can see he kind of finishes the race up at about here, right? And let's say that's like 9.7 seconds. So it takes about 9.7 seconds to finish the race. We're going to write that down. He runs 100 meters. Okay, and so just to show you that I guess the stem of this calculation, this is actually the gradient. This is the gradient from this point here all the way up to this point here. And I'll. That's that gradient right here. Okay, the gradient of that line is 10.31. We can see, well, it's not, it's not exactly precise. Let's consider the gradient uh, for the first 20 meters of this race. So if we go from this point here up to the 20 meter mark, which is about there, takes him about 2.9 seconds, 2.9. So, and just to recall, to calculate the gradient, it's rise over one, rise over run. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if we were to calculate it for the first 20 meters, All right, so we can see he runs at about 6.9 meters per second uh, in the first 20 meters of this race. And so just to illustrate this point here, this means that this gradient here, it's not as steep as what it was before, 6.9. Let's consider the last 20 meters of this race. So the last 20 meters, let's say it goes from yeah, 80 meters to 100 meters. And so this, this point here would be 9.7 comma 100. And this point here would be 8,80. Okay, so just to illustrate this point here, in his last 20 meters, and we can see that gradient's gonna be a bit steeper. I've, I've, got, to, I've got to incline my ruler a little bit more to get it so that we've got a gradient of 11.76, right? So meaning, meaning he's running 11.76 meters per second. Just to reiterate, these are average speeds. They're average speeds. Okay, and hopefully we can see that as two points are getting closer, the average speed is getting more accurate within a, uh, a specific time period. So now given that we've looked at these as average speeds, this is not differential calculus. Differential calculus will answer the question at exactly this particular point here, this particular point at that one point, I want to know what's his speed, okay, or what is the gradient at that one particular point. Now, hopefully we can see here, well, what is the building block for differential calculus? What is it? It is a gradient. The gradient will tell you how two variables are changing. It's a gradient. Write it down. It is the gradient that is going to tell you how two things are changing. That's what we'll be looking at here. So hopefully you can see, if you're trying to find the gradient for one particular point, you're going to get a more accurate reading of the gradient as the two points, as you take an average of the two points when they get closer together. 
Here it's saying, calculate the gradient between two points on the curve, hence determine the average speed. So hopefully we're seeing that it's the gradient that's gonna tell you how two things are changing. Here's distance, here's time. The gradient between these two points, you can link them up. It's like just doing rise over run. Okay, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You can draw the gradient line if you wish. Okay, so we work out that that gradient is equal to 30. But what this is actually implying, this is, this is what we're trying to get out of it, what the gradient is implying. This gradient here implies that between the points, so from t equals 1 to t equals 3, whatever this thing was, it was traveling, it had a speed of 30 kilometers per hour, right? And I'm saying kilometers per hour because this is kilometers and this is per hour. Those are just the units that I'm given. It's the interpretation that we're really trying to get out of this.